Hey there everyone, I covered the top 10 mythics in the game a couple of years ago, but things have changed in that time. Compared to last time, mythics are now basically everywhere, we've got a lot more mythics in the game, and defense has increased, we've also got HP boost, which means monsters need to be doing a lot more damage, so, you know, what things we value has changed a bit. So this list is quite different to last time, and in fact there's a lot of very playable mythics in the game which are uh, stronger than mythic, uh, sorry, stronger than legendaries, they basically outclass the legendaries. So I've titled this video Top 10, but we're actually going to cover quite a few uh, very quickly at the beginning, which are the ones that are playable, you should definitely consider getting, they outclass legendaries, they just didn't make the top 10. So, talking about HP boost, um, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I made a recent uh, video both for Mythics and for Legendaries, the top uh, the top monsters to go for that. Um, I think I actually ranked every single Mythic in the game um, in the Mythic video, uh, as well as a guide to do with that. So, I'm not going to mention HP boost in this video other than here at the beginning, where things need to be able to do enough damage to kill those monsters. Um, also, you'll see throughout this video, um, there are tier rankings for second the second form. Um, so the first screens you'll see a number next to each of the mythics and what that is is basically uh, like very simply put tier one is they are kind of as good as their final form they do the job. Tier two is they're not as good but they're kind of okay monsters. Tier three is they're not particularly good in their second form. So you can take that into account if it's a monster which you're like okay I'd quite like to have this one but it's a tier three so I've got to go the whole way to awaken it. If it's a tier 1, you might consider just getting it in second form, where it will do the job, and um, yeah, you know, we can't awaken every single mythic in the game, so it's kind of to help you sort of pick uh, pick which ones you want to be awakening. So talking about some of the mythics that didn't make the top 10, here we're looking at a screen which has all the generic sweepers. These are ones which, like I just said, they outclass the legendaries in the game. So the vast majority of legendaries are not as strong as this. If you put these in your team, you're mostly powering up your team and um, it will give it kind of a good aggressive shell that it can play with. Um, a lot of them offer things like um, slightly faster sweeping than legendaries or piercing or um, <clears throat> some kind of immunity or they can kill off deadweight teammates, that kind of stuff. So all that comes into play on top of then, uh, them being generically very good, that means they kind of outcast the legendaries, and so they're worth, uh, they're very noteworthy. So just talking through them very quickly, going through the columns from left to right, at the top left we have um, Christine, who, she's better in Linkwater, but she can kill off deadweight uh, teammate and is just a very effective sweeper, hit around protectors, that kind of stuff. Um, then we've got Hazuki, who has piercing and everything and is very tanky. Uh, she also revives herself, so she's got two lives, uh, plays very well. Then we've got Prixis, she's very fast, um, very effective sweeper um, at things and got some immunities. Then we've got Satomi, who, um, sorry, Satomi, who can knock back next very efficiently, um, also do a bit of piercing stuff and just... A very efficient sweeping, 100 to 130 seconds on everything and, and pretty reliable. Um, then we've got uh, Don Rilla, who is not the highest damage. He sometimes struggles a bit uh, with that, which is why he doesn't make the list, but he did make the list a couple of years ago. Um, he's got sleep immunity, so that really comes into play, and he can heal teammates, which works very nicely with tanky things. He's tanky himself. Then we've got Suikenshi, who counters stealth very nicely, um, and also hits around protectors. Then we've got Wilhelmina, who has team turn, which is great on that. Struggles a bit on the damage, which is why she is not on this list, but um, the team turn is, is very, very nice. Also a bit of piercing on there. Uh, then we've got Barry, who has um, basically counter stealth, um, pretty effective sweeping, very similar to Sue Kenji actually, um, and a bit tankier as well. Then we've got Vespia, a very new one here, um, has stun converter sweeping, which is very nice, um, can give a turn the first turn it gets. It's a little bit slow to get that first turn, um, but but generally generally a very effective sweeper. Next to cover are the low TU sweepers. Now there's a few of these in the game, uh, this isn't all of them uh, because some of them are kind of in the top 10 or in some other list or they um, like the legendaries there's a couple of them. What makes these special? It's basically they are win conditions if they manage to get going, if they get ignored and so you can either build around them or you can fit them into your team and they're a massive threat. Um, so they're very noteworthy because if you can slip them into a team they can win the game for you um, if they if they go well. Um, so even if a couple of these aren't super good, like for example Karina is not amazing in PvP, she's she's brilliant in PvE, but in PvP uh, she doesn't always line up super well, but she can very easily win the game for you, so she's very noteworthy for that aspect. Um, so yeah, these four guys, uh, they're very worth getting, uh, they're worth getting for that reason, they're just not necessarily quite as strong as this top 10, um, so extra cross. Um, this is pretty slow, but it comes in and it marks a bunch of stuff, and then it can um, do this 
70 second uh, just kill, no questions asked, hit round protectors um, over and over as long as there's enough things marked on the battlefield. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. And then Goliatherian is basically a stronger version of that. Similar kind of speed, but much tankier. And it has the setup on its first turn of pulling back a teammate to make emoji, and then it can do the same kind of thing. Naturgal's a bit faster, uh, but a lot squishier. Um, and it can do 50 second sweeping from its first turn, but has to sacrifice something. Then you've got Karina, who can, um, I think it's every 60 seconds, uh, do stuff much more effective and reliable than other ones, apart from the fact that she flips her HP. So if you don't have a nice setup for keeping her HP above one, um, then she will die off fairly easily. Um, so you need to have some kind of build around for that. Um, but yeah. These monsters are definitely noteworthy and things that you should consider having because they are very strong, even if they're in this not in this top 10. Next we have the build-around monsters. So these are kind of my favourite type of things to, to do. Um, they are ones that didn't meet the top 10, like I said, but um, they are very strong if they are in the specific kind of team that they work in. Um, so they all do things that are much stronger than what legendaries do. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I said, I, I've played with a couple of these and they're very powerful. Um, they just need the right kind of setup for them. So start off, uh, we have Fiona. She's basically beast slash stealth setup, um, which she supports very nicely. She's supportive for that. Then you've got Flutter Drake Maeve. Um, this is a very popular monster, works with the Flutter Drakes basically, usually works um, in some kind of bug team as well, uh, because the Flutter Drakes are bugs. She's not a bug herself, but they, it all flows nicely with that kind of stuff. And um, then she's like tanky, support, sweep, knockback type stuff. Uh, does cool things, and that's why people like her. Uh, then you've got Hades Hoof. Now this was pretty close to, um, well, close-ish to the top 10. Uh, you can use it somewhat generically, but it's a lot better in Link Shadow. Uh, it's sort of Link Shadow and at the front of your team, which is why I classed it as a build around. Um, but there it's a stun counter damage dealer, uh, which is very effective. Then you've got Lemon, who is basically end game sleep setup. You have to build her in a certain way, like with Purify behind, um, or where you're going to either Purify the battlefield um, beforehand, or poison your team or have sleep immune stuff in front of her and then she can be very effective so very particular setups you have to be careful about how you build around her but then it's very strong Nagandia this is somewhat generic um, Nagandia can remove a deadweight teammate um, and otherwise kill enemies very effectively also having daunt plus as a sort of fallback um, but where Nagandia does really well is when you are able to hit around the rocks um, she supports uh, true hit monsters very effectively and that kind of stuff so if you build a veranda I think that's what takes her from being kind of generically very good to being very very strong um, then we've got Coretta who is very clearly a build around monster she needs to combine with a, a teammate to buff that teammate and then she becomes buffed and then so you kind of want to keep the teammate alive so it needs to be a, a good target for that the way you build around her is you build you, you put a two or three good targets in your team around her pretty much, and then you do um, the, the, the stuff she wants to do. Then we've got Hushin. Hushin um, doesn't like other mythics. Uh, you need a player with legendaries and below. Um, so that is a bit of an issue for people who want to awaken a bunch of mythics. Um, but they made her so strong that she is well worth it if you play her with some strong legendaries. So um, yeah, she is a crazy damage dealer um, and can keep herself alive quite nicely too. Then we've got uh, Ophidiata, which is for Reptile Union, basically, and it's in that it's a tanky, good sweeper, kind of just works generically well. Um, it can create a couple of babies that, that work well. It's good for HP boost um, to kind of create this tanky reptile setup. Um, so yeah, those are really cool monsters. I really like these build around monsters, um, but I couldn't justify having them in the top 10. Uh, but if any of them interest you, uh, or you're sort of thinking, is this actually strong enough? Well, these ones definitely are. So now moving into the top 10 properly. We start off with Arachna Diva at number 10. This one I had in the top 10 last time. I I was thinking, oh, maybe it's been pushed out, but no, I, I cannot justify taking this out of the top 10. Um, it is it is really nice because um, it helps control your battlefield really well. And it's very awkward to deal with because it has the two very strong passives. Camouflage is always a pain to deal with. And then Ultimate Payback, um, it's it's a piercing payback. So one of the issues with Payback Revenge is um, they can hit it with a monster that has a shield or has whole ground or, you know, doesn't really... Can, can kind of deal with the fact that it takes damage as, as a revenge. But Ultimate Payback just straight up kills that monster. So it's very hard to trade well with Arachnidiva. And the only thing really holding Arachnidiva back 
is the low speed, which is fair enough because otherwise it would be too strong. Um, it can protect itself, it can scapegoat uh, teammates to, um, you know, do do powerful things, um, kind of force things to uh, be killed off, um, which is actually often better than Rockoid Morph, uh, where you just straight up kill off the teammate, um, because uh, you will force an, an attack or two from the enemy team to kill it off rather than just killing it off yourself. And then everything flows really nicely into Vengeance because, you know, a teammate dies off, then you trigger Vengeance. Um, you can literally just do Rockoid Morph, Vengeance, and then Bloodlust. So it, it's, it controls what dies off on your battlefield. Um, it trades well and also is just going to be a very reliable sweeper uh, with how it attacks. You don't need to worry about the secret skill. Um, but yeah, this is just very good for fitting into a team and helping the flow of the team. In number 9 we have Gorga Drake. Now this is one that doesn't really see much play, but I am a big fan of it, so I kind of trust that it is very strong, and I've used it a lot in the second form, and the second form's somewhat equivalent to the final form. Um, it does have a higher chance to die, and that's kind of the big problem. But anyway, what we're looking at here is a monster that has pretty high speed, and then from its first turn, as long as enemies are poisoned, it can kill them super, super quickly. So this is one of the low TU sweepers, um, which... I would class as probably the best one, um, because the double poison eater, getting two enemies every 60 seconds is, is crazy. Um, and then it doesn't have the issue of uh, a lot of monsters that, you know, they sweep two enemies at a time, but they can't deal with camouflage. Well, Gorgodrake doesn't have that issue because it has bloodthirst. So it can switch to, sing it can do single or double depending on whether you want the control or not. Um, all you need this with is something that has um, auto poison, and then it can sweep like mad. And similar to Ratna Diva, it has Death Revenge, so um, it's going to trade well. Even if um, even if they're like, okay, I can't I can't deal with that monster if it gets a turn. I'm going to kill it now. They've got to take the Death Revenge. So this plays super well. It's just that occasionally it will die quite quickly. And if you're relying on this as being your sweeper, like if you built around it too much uh, by putting all this poison support stuff for Gorga Drake, if it dies off on its first turn, that would be very disappointing. So you've got to find some kind of balance. Um, but it can very easily win you games if it's just going to sit there. At number 8 we have Nyx. Now this is a new one to the list and it could go higher, could go lower. I'm expecting somewhat of a nerf. So what you're looking at here may not be the moveset that you actually see in the game. Um, that's actually a slight disclaimer for this whole video. Is that um, almost all the screenshots I'm showing you are up to date with the current movesets that monsters have. But some of those movesets may change uh, over time so you may not. They may not be exactly what I'm showing to you here. Uh, I apologise for that. It's likely that they're just they're still very strong because they tend to not do drastic balance changes. Um, it's usually just small things because one bit was a bit too strong, that kind of thing. Anyway, talk about Nyx. So Nyx um, has a lot of very interesting things going on with her. Um, she has this instant send back at 92% speed that can enable some very powerful combos in the front line. Um, if they restrict that so you can't do it at the start of the battle, which is what I'm expecting, uh, it still works very nicely in the mid-game, where she can come in and then remove some dead weight or um, remove a high-speed monster before she does for Marta and slow down all the high-speed monsters. What she ultimately does is she counters high-speed lineups with the Fermata, which just wrecks anything above 50% speed. Um, so she's she enables teams which have low speed the one issue with that is that if you're using a bunch of monsters that have low speed um you will be at somewhat of a disadvantage compared to your opponent because you're building around that um your opponent will have higher speed stuff um but you can be clever with how you build around nyx uh, that it's going to be okay she's also got sleep immunity so you can build in some kind of one-on-one -on -one type setup so again in the mid game you can have her come in instant send back the thing that doesn't work with one-on-one, -on -one, bring in your one-on-one -on -one monster, do the one-on-one, -on -one, and you're happy. So there's a bunch of ways you can build around this, and the kind of general idea of her is you use Fermata, wreck a couple of enemies, and then leave them alone because they're going to be so slow that they're just not a threat. And then you start charging Crescendo. Once she has any kind of kill, then she can Blood Fury as well. Um, and, you know, the Worlds of your Oyster, there's a lot you can do with this. It's very strong. Um, and it can create some very powerful setups. In number seven is Cynthia. Now, if you remember my video from a couple of years ago, Cynthia was number one. She's dropped to seven, and the main reason is because her damage is not quite high enough to deal with uh, high defense mythics, especially when they're HP boosted. So, unfortunately, 
she's fallen a bit because of that. Uh, double Retribution, even a couple of years ago, wasn't particularly strong, so you're mainly looking at the quick draw, which is very, very fast. Uh, Cynthia wants to be combined with uh, Auto Poison, preferably, because um, she can't deal with uh, shields particularly well, because that would just absorb the quick draw, and then they're not marked anymore, so you can't quick draw them again. Um, so you want that kind of thing to help the aggression, but what she really does is work super well with any kind of sleep stuff, or just generally countering sleep. Because of her sleep immunity and having instant purify all, um, she gives you a really solid uh, defense from it, and you can combine her with sleep immune stuff to create some really nasty setups. So what you do with her is you just get some sweeping going, and then she can quick draw all the things that enter, and uh you've got a bit of extra utility with a double repulse protection from sleep with instant purify all and otherwise sleep immunity and reasonable defense she does a lot uh she's very strong um she's not one that you just want to jam into a team and hope it works you need to, to put a bit of thought into a place in a team and i think that's why i don't see her quite as much as i'd expect to see her i know that quite a few people have her but don't use her um and i don't think the issue is because she's not strong i think it's because you have to put a little bit of thought into how you build around her. She's definitely much stronger in one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, so moving on to number six, we have Bastia. So this is very well known as very strong. What she does is control the battlefield and then turn a strong position into a winning uh, position. What well, I say, winning position. A, a win overall, because basically you can hold control super well uh, because all the entrances of the enemy team are not going to happen and she can be healing your team. So if they're not in a good spot, they're probably not going to be able to kill off any of your monsters when you're repeatedly healing them, and their new monsters coming in aren't working properly. Uh, that's that's basically how it goes. The, the difficulty with Bastia is you have to build your own team without entrances. Um, Bastia herself is also very slow, so you've got to get into the position when you're in control, and if Bastia dies first, you're then probably at a disadvantage because you've had to build your team not having entrances. So trying to get back into the battle, often that's done with good entrances and you don't have that in your team. Um, that said, obviously, she's incredibly powerful, um, especially her goddess's protection, doing the fully heal, purify and shielding your team. If you pull that off, that often gives you that opening to then take control of the battle and then from there you hold it and win. Um, she works also very well with tanky HP boosted mythics, which I think is ultimately where things are trending. So I think she's going to fit fit well in the long run. Um, and yeah, that's basically Bastia. Very powerful mythic, uh, definitely a good one. Securalisk. Now this one is one I don't own myself, so I'm slightly dubious about its exact position and how its exact strength. However, it has historically been very, very strong and I do still see a lot of people using it. So I do think it's very strong. It's just can be a little bit clunky. Um, so the cool thing about this is basically it does sleep on the enemy team a lot. So anything that enters has a 20% chance to sleep. Also, its first turn can sleep an enemy of your choice at only 50 seconds. Um, so that often gives you enough control. You know, you've got that raw hypnotize and double repulse to kind of get control. And then if you get lucky as soon as you kill anything that new things enter sleeping, you kind of, you know, that's helping you win the game. Like you, you can't the other person won't be able to fight back much unless they have specific counters to sleep. So that's kind of what it does on top of the fact it's a stun counter, it's tanky, um, so it offers you that kind of support in your team. If you can get two kills in it, then it can do double bloodthirst very nicely, and originally um, I think I was somewhat more against using Dream Crush. Dream Crush is a very slow move, however the way things have gone in the last couple of years is we have this tanky stuff, piercing really matters, um, also, you can kind of get away with doing a Dream Crush if the rest of your team is aggressive enough or controlling enough that you can you can do that and then still hold some control and not need uh, Securalist to have another turn or otherwise, you know, you don't need to leave all the enemies asleep, sleeping, that kind of stuff. So I think Securalist fits really nicely in terms of giving you the stun protection and also um, sleep control. That kind of thing is just very, very strong. Um, you meet the counters occasionally, but... Outside of that, it's very powerful. The top four in this list, I think, are four which really stand out above the rest. So, you know, I just said that I was a little bit dubious about Securalisk, uh, Bastia and Cynthia, like they're very strong, but there's some downsides to them. These top four, they're just super, super, super good. Um, so Soral here, this is um, 
a sweeper, it kind of wants to do um, Link Shadow or Stealth or Bird Union. It supports all that. It doesn't really care too much about that stuff because it can just be used generically uh, because on its first turn it will do instant bronze stuff sub substitute and then convert that into a baby which then means it can't be targeted uh, that charges union attack because the baby is also a bird and then it also charges double blood fury so this can just be jammed into any team it's really good to place after something like Desikian so it comes in with a shield it stealths your team as you enter uh, so it will have that stealth to protect it to that first turn um, but for example, with Tzikin, it's going to have the stealth and a shield, so trying to kill it before that first turn is difficult, and then once it gets a turn, it's going to start uh, creating these other babies, so then it can't be targeted. Um, and yeah, it just does really well. The baby does good damage with Union Attack. Um, this can also kill off dead weight really nicely with the baby conversion. Baby conversion is very fast, um, so it works well with that. Um, initially, people were like, oh, it gets stunned and stuff like that, but you can you can build it into a team carefully enough that it's not going to get stunned. It's just very, very powerful. At number three, we have Momo. So Momo is, without a doubt, the best stun protection in the game. Um, it's just ridiculously tanky, and every time it gets a turn, it can do something good, either piercing, killing something, or doing a life lip enemy, which which sometimes comes up as being really useful. Uh, that's especially good for getting t kills on teammates. So you can life lip something that's on full HP, down to one HP, and then a teammate can finish it off with something. So that, you know, there's like, for example, um, Cellar Shine, I think the name is it is, with uh, Roaring Entrance, it's got Finishing Snap and Blood Fury. So it wants to grab a kill on that, you know. There's other monsters, uh, one of my favourites, Skullopen Dragon, that needs a kill, and then it can start doing this Death Bite Chain, which is just insanely uh, deadly. <laughs> and, well, it keeps healing itself and it's tanky and stuff, so uh, that's desperate for one kill. Um, and you can use something like Momo for that. Um, you'd also, just slight aside, you do stuff like uh, putting bronze shells and things in the enemy team to kill those off to get a kill on it. Um, just if you're thinking about that way with, you know, monsters that want to do that kind of thing, those, that's the other way to do it. But you've also got Life Flip Enemy here. Repulse comes up as very useful for certain things. Say you meet a Tortogeist, uh, you do not want to kill the Tortogeist, you can then repulse it after it protects, and when it re-enters it cannot protect, so then you can ignore it for ages until its drained survivor is ready, and in that time, you know, probably find a way to uh, to kill it effectively. Um, yeah, great utility, on top of the fact this is just a stupidly tanky stun protection monster that can fast breaker things, um, so we'll just reliably get kills. Fast breaker also does enough to kill HP boosted mythics, um, so not an issue with damage at all. Um, and then if you're wondering about, oh, but it's going to get countered by Time's Up or Chrono Kiddo, well, firstly, it's tanky enough that it won't, um, but also you can uh, use the morph to switch it between a protector and a stun counter to avoid those counters and fully heal it as it does that. For that reason, you don't really want to use it with other holy monsters, but it's not a big deal because that's kind of like a, a side thing um, that sometimes you'll want to heal it that way. Um, so yeah, very powerful monster. Um, probably the biggest addition to anyone's team would be getting Momo because it covers that stun protection slot um, just super well and does a lot. Carmilla though is stronger. Um, this is a ridiculously powerful monster. Last year when I was talking about it, I was saying it's the strongest in the game, but as you can see, it's number two. So there's one that's gone higher than it. Um, but this is ridiculous because of its perfect stance and the blood drain. The blood drain fully heals it basically, and the perfect stance means that when it's um, above 90% HP, it takes roughly one-tenth of the damage, so it needs usually two critical hits just to get it below 90%, and then another one to kill it off before it can then use Blood Drain to heal itself up. Uh, yeah, that's really hard to do. Uh, you basically need Piercing to be able to kill it properly, um, or Payback Killer, uh, because it's got death revenge, so let's say you had piercing, well then, you haven't actually countered it, because you kill it, and then you face the death revenge, so you really need payback killer, that's like the one proper counter to Carmilla, um, and yeah, if you don't have that, this can be an absolute nightmare to deal with, and it's not the kind of monster you can just ignore either, like sure, you can stun it, you can sleep it, most monsters can be stunned or put to sleep, putting it down onto low HP repeatedly, so it can't do anything other than blood drain is not that effective because it blood drains pretty quickly and it takes a lot to hit down to that 
Um, if you ignore it though, it's it's so deadly because the Vega Blood Bite is super fast. Like you can see, you know, it's 100 seconds, but it's it's actually 85 seconds. And if you can accelerate it or let him accelerate it, that's just ridiculously deadly. And that also heals it back up. So if it's not put down below 80% HP, it can just Vega Blood Bite and then heal up. So usually you're doing Vega Blood Bite over and over with uh, with Carmilla, but then you've also got the Dual Confident Strike, uh, so you can hit two enemies with it uh, if you want. And that doesn't get the heal, but if she's on 100% already, then it will do really high damage. So it's just like repeated killing that's very hard to, do, um, like very annoying on top of her being ridiculously tanky. Um, the only things holding Carmilla back are firstly, she does have a couple of counters. You know, piercing somewhat counters, payback killer does counter her. Um, also, she can be sleeped or stunned, um, so there's that kind of stuff to worry about. And also the killing while it's it's fast, it's relatively good. Like it's good, very good compared to the vast majority of things in the game. It's not super fast, and that's why she is number two. But before we get to number one, I have a few honourable mentions I want to make. Um, so the first one being Orochi. This one uh, basically does stun control super super well, and um, I haven't seen it that much. I would love to see it more. Uh, but one thing I found out recently is that if it dies when it does the stun move it actually stuns the full amount so the stun bisector basically halves the stun that happens from stun stunning fulu so rather than it being 200 seconds it's actually 100 seconds however if she dies when she does that she then uh will do the full 200 seconds so um they've recently changed it to spend 40 percent of the max hp rather than 50 percent um, which I don't know if that's in terms of a nerf or a buff, but it does mean that she can't just do stunning Fulu twice in a row and stun for 300 seconds. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> there's a lot of stun control you can get out of her, and that's the main thing. Swift Revival is also very powerful. Um, you know, you can kind of do the stunning Fulu into Swift Revival into another stunning Fulu, and that's just going to give you a lot of value. Um, the difficulty with her is the death entrance. Um, you do have to build around that a bit. So, um, but I think ultimately on balance like i've gone back and forth on this slightly but i think ultimately it is a benefit because you can build around it and the easiest ways to build around it are well the best one for orochi is to put death gazer behind her so she can't be used near the front of the battle anyway so you want to be using her um towards the end which is where death gazer wants to be and death gazer pulls everything forwards by 50 seconds so if the death entrance hits the enemy team Okay, fine, whatever, you know, you got a free kill. If it hits your team, it will bring in Death Gazer, pull Orochi forwards, and she gets a turn super fast, and then she can kill their stun protection with Stunning Fulu to stun the rest of the team, uh, the rest of the enemies, and then chain that into this stun control. So, crazy stun control potential here, a little bit of awkward building around, um, but I think this is very powerful. Um, I think Swift Revival is also a very strong move. Um, it's the kind of thing that's easy to kind of not think about much, but then actually... You know, if it lines up properly, you'll get a lot of value from just a, a free extra monster on 100% HP. Um, so yeah, Orochi I think is very strong. I'd like to see her use more. A Husker Gun, this is another stun control monster. Um, I think the two of them basically... The reason why I wanted the honorable mentions and I didn't put them like at the start where I was saying, oh, these are powerful, is because I think these are actually worthy of a top 10 position. They just didn't quite make it in there uh, because they're not quite as strong as the other ones, but they, they add something to a team that's extremely valuable. So Hustle can basically its really powerful thing is the shocking entrance. Um, it will come in, stun, and then get a turn quickly and then do show of might to stun them more and uh, sleep them there. It can ally substitute itself to get a second stun. So there's a lot of kind of stun that you can do. And the way it, people tend to use it is they will um, have a good target to sacrifice when it comes in. Um, or they want to chain it into something behind because basically when you do that show of might you will bring the next monster in and so you can do um, Huskigan into something like Nova Drake or uh, Doom Goo, some kind of fast sweeper that then will get some benefit, uh, basically get going during the time that you've created with this extra stun and while well, it's, you know, after it's stunned, it can then do uh, killing stuff. You know, if it does the show of might, that actually grabs a kill for its raw blood crave, but otherwise it can, can time crush double, and that does good damage because it's it's got high attack here. So, very effective stunner. I think Hustle Gun is extremely powerful. Um, it's stun slightly underused by people who have um, a lot of mythics, a lot of Waken mythics, but I do see a lot of um, people in the lower brackets who have it in second form and stuff uh, using it a lot and loving it. So I think by, at the point where those people have advanced to the point where they're facing top people and have Awaken mythics and stuff, 
hopefully then Hasukun will see a lot more play. Um, it definitely deserves a lot of love. Um, it's a very strong stun control monster. Next we've got Lilithia. Now this one's a really hard one to place. Basically what she does is this passive Lilithia's domain in the very bottom left, where she stealths and shields everything that enters on your team. Um, so she just passively gives you a lot of benefit. Uh, she can swift pull back a teammate as well to bring in the next one, or, or you know that one will re-enter later with a shield and stealth on it. Um, Pure Cure works very nicely for a few different setups. I think Lilithia is one of the best monsters to use with Karina, which has the HP flipping thing and you, you don't want her to be stuck on, on whole ground. So Lilithia can Pure Cure. Also one of the counters to Karina is um, Poison, and Lilithia really nicely counters Poison because it's got that Pure Cure, but also Antidote. Um, so yeah, she counters Sleep, she counters Poison, she makes your team a lot stronger if you're trading back and forth, and she can also deal high damage if there's a storm enemy. So typically she plays very well, but sometimes she will fall a bit flat, and that's why she didn't make the top 10, but I think she is one that can very easily fit into some of the top teams and make them play very well. Uh, definitely a very strong monster, just like Gabrielle. So this one has seen a lot of popularity since her buff. Um, she basically comes in and gets a turn very, very quickly, and then can do a variety of things. The really strong thing here with getting a turn quickly is give turn i would say um it does give her some fr frontline combo potential to come in and quickly give turn to something uh if you were to sacrifice something quickly at the beginning or or, or you know otherwise bring in your fifth spot and you have gabriel in the fifth spot um purify mist is also brilliant to have on a high speed monster uh slayer break tends to play very very well she also heals your team when she enters which is more useful than it's you know often gets credit for she does a good amount to swing the battle when she comes in and then is a brilliant support monster. If you're losing, then she has a shield on her. Uh, that is really, really effective. Um, it's not worth building around. Like It's not worth putting tokens and stuff into the enemy team to make them have more monsters than you. It tends to just be, you know, if you're winning, you don't need her to have a shield because you're already winning. If you're losing, then she has this permanent shield so she can only be killed by piercing moves and then she will be really good at helping you kind of get back into the battle, you know, getting this this uh, turn quickly to purify mist or give turn to a teammate or take out a sweeper with a slayer break. Um, so she is excellent for the mid game to be able to shore up your team against uh, those battles where you're doing poorly and you need a bit of support. Uh, Gabriel really does that. And Drain Survivor doesn't take that long to charge. It, it sort of, it charges faster than you'd think because if she comes in and she has the shield on her, uh, she tends to be ignored for a little bit um, because they can't deal with her properly. And so then you actually get to that Drain Survivor and um, that's nice because then you don't you can do more than just kill enemies with kills, you can kill other enemies too. But the Slayer Break being piercing makes it a lot stronger than you'd think. So lastly, at number one, we have Vixen Blade. Now, I think this is very slightly better than our Carmilla. However, either one could be number one. The issue with Carmilla is that it doesn't have piercing sweeping. And even though the sweeping moves are fast, they're 100 or 130 seconds for two enemies, they're not insanely fast. So Vixen Blade has piercing on all the moves uh, because of the, the, the buff it gets, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so this, the generic move Bloodthirst is a little bit slower than Carmida sweeping, but it's piercing, so kind of a lot more reliable. And then you've got 50 and 60 second moves, which are you know also piercing sweeping. So those are going to be devastating uh, when they when you can use them. Um, so I think for that reason, Vixen Blade comes out on top, but either one could be number one. So the issue with running Vixen Blade is you do need to make sure you're not running any other water monsters, otherwise those solo moves are, are blocked, as well as uh, you cannot use other beasts because then you don't have the buff. And without the buff, it's it's not really anything special. Uh, you need that buff. So that is a harsher team, restri um, team building restriction than you would expect, because, um, yes, you can, you know, just not put those things there. If you move through at the front, then you can just n have none of them in, like, say, the first half of your team, and you're going to be all good. However, if you want to, if you're not just playing, like, generically good stuff in your team, if you want to build around anything else in your team, well, then it actually restricts you a fair bit by cutting out a whole element, and also there's a lot of really good beasts in the game. So, um, yeah, cutting out both of those, it does make things a little bit tricky. So... What Vixen Blade is is really a payoff for doing that team building, and the payoff is enormous. Uh, so let's actually talk about the moveset itself. Um, we've mentioned this buff a few times uh, with 
without having beasts. Basically, double stats and piercing on the moves is just crazy. Because Vixen Blade already has high defense, this means that she pretty much has the defense cap. Uh, only full attack monsters that attack her don't face the defense cap. So um, that's just ridiculous tanking. And on top of the fact that Vixen Blade has whole ground, like that, that's just really, really good. Um, and then obviously piercing is insane for uh, these moves. So Dream Hunt is just Dream Crush, which, you know, normal Dream Crush is 160 seconds. This is only 50. Uh, that's a, an insane reduction. And then the Slayer Bane um, goes from doing, you know, mediocre damage to being a guaranteed kill on anything that has a kill, uh, which is which is crazily strong. Uh, Bloodthirst also one-shots after just a single kill. I believe it does somewhere between five to 6,000. I can't remember exactly, but basically it one-shots anything after just a single kill. And because you've got that solo, you're grounded uh, to get one kill. Um, that, you know, we very easily grab one kill, then you can just go follow up with uh, with the Bloodthirst uh, to kill anything else. Very low restrictions for, uh, for Vixen Blade sweeping. So all that means that it's just going to be a really reliable sweeper. It doesn't need to be used in some kind of one-on-one -on -one setup because Solo Slayer Bane is very generic. Uh, it's not going to be so easy to charge in the front line like that, but you can use Vixen Blade outside of the front line. It comes in, does Solo Slayer Bane on something, and then it can just kill however you want it to. One-on-one -on -one really on this monster is not really something to build around as such. It's more a case of um, it's just upside. So sometimes you'll be in the case where there's, you know, your team's poisoned, the enemy team is not, and you go, great, thank you very much, I will one-on-one, -on -one and my team's not asleep, and your team is. Um, so it's great for turning things around like that. It does, however, also allow it to charge the Bloodthirst super easily, because you'll put things to sleep, and then you can dream hunt them, and that dream hunt, like we said, it's super, super fast. And so just grab one kill with that, and then you can Bloodthirst. Um, it's also great then for healing Vixen and play back up, and that's where I think this gets really interesting, is you can use Vixen Blade with sleep monsters. So they sleep the enemies, and then you kill them off super fast with this Dream Hunt to heal Vixen Blade. And it then, you know, <laughs> it's like, how are you going to kill that, really? Um, it ends up, ends up being more like Carmilla in that case. Um, so yeah, that that's very powerful. Um, I haven't seen people mess around with things too much, because Vixen Blade is pretty, uh, like, came out pretty recently. Um, but you can do some kind of stuff like that, which I think should be very strong. And like I said, just generically with Slayer Bane, it will work very well. Uh, behind Protectors, it works very well because, you know, they kill them and then you have to, you can just Slayer Bane them. Uh, but like, if you just use it with really strong stuff, like as the stuff that's a big threat, it's like, well, do you want to kill these big threats? In which case, you're going to get punished by this Slayer Bane, which will kill faster than anything you're trying to do. Or do you kill the Vixen Blade, which, ugh, by the way, it's like defense cap and whole ground, and if you've HP boosted this or whatever, like it, it's very, very hard to kill. Um, so do you want to like focus on that and try and kill it off, um, and in that time probably get massacred by the other monsters in the team? Like Vixen Blade just plays super well in that kind of way. It's like kind of like having a Carmilla, which is oh, if you don't kill me, I will punish you really hard. Um, you know, when you put, make a tanky monster that does that kind of thing, it, it's quite crazy. So that's how Vixen Blade generally plays. Like I said, the one-on-one, -on -one, you don't have to build around it. You could also just build around it, though. It's just a bit harder to build around because you can't do uh, beasts or, or uh, water stuff, which means, you know, when you're trying to do specific things for doing a specific build around, like one-on-one, -on -one, it, it, it gets a bit more restrictive on with stuff. Um, so yeah, that's basically Vixen Blade. Um, it's extremely strong in any team, at the in the front line, further back in the team, wherever you want to put it. You can do it with one on one. You can use it just generically, and uh, you can do some some stuff to try and heal it up. I mean, you can use other monsters to heal it up too, um, which then just make takes you know this this tanky whole ground monster to another level. Um, it's clearly an insane monster that's extremely strong. Um, so that is it for all the monsters in this video. I hope you enjoyed me going through them. Um, if you like this kind of content, I make other guide videos and things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about to bring out another one, uh, another video, which is top 10 legendaries in the game. Um, and then I'll be doing a series which will be reviewing all the monsters that came out in, in this most recent year of, uh, of Neo Monsters. So if you like that stuff, stick around, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Um, if there are monsters which were missed out from this video or you felt like I overhyped, uh, or anything like that, leave a comment and um, we'll have a bit of discussion down there. I always like to see what, what people's favourite monsters are and you know what, what they felt like I missed out. Um, I know that last time um, 
on another recent video anyway that someone was commenting saying oh Huskigan's really good and I, I agree that's why Huskigan's here so um, anyway that's it from me hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in a video soon